Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the 2018 NFL Draft Class, specifically the Dallas Cowboys, in terms of an analytics review of their class. Uh, so we're going to look at this class based on production and athleticism data to determine what these players could look like long term based on analytics. And if you are new to the channel and new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. So let's get to all the picks in the class. So starting off, uh, the Dallas Cowboys selected Lan Leighton Vander Esch, linebacker out of Boise State. Uh, based on his production data, he scored a 96.73 solo tackle production score. Uh, which basically puts him, uh, he, he hits all All-Pro and Pro Bowl level production thresholds and is kind of in between an All-Pro and Pro Bowl player when it comes to his production. And when you get to his athleticism data, uh, he scored a 98.52 explosive lower body strength score, a 86.06 speed score, and a 97.22 flexibility score. Uh, pretty much hits all All-Pro production thresholds, uh, not at production, but athleticism thresholds when you look at his overall athleticism. So, for the most part, on paper, Leighton Van Der Esch is one of the best testing linebackers in this draft class. Um, only big question marks, of course, is only one year worth of solid production, you know, with him as a starter. And that one year wonderness is definitely a question mark. But other than that, has all the stuff on paper to become a very, very good linebacker at the NFL level. Uh, and then, of course, you get to Connor Williams, offensive tackle out of Texas. Uh, when you get to his uh, his athleticism testing, he scored an 89.35 explosive lower body strength score, 74.93 speed score, and 57.22 flexibility score. Uh, doesn't quite hit the speed score of a all-pro offensive tackle, but definitely hits the explosive lower body strength score and the flexibility score of those types of players. The only major question mark with him is his flexibility testing. Uh, most starting tackles, not even all-pro to Pro Bowl level, but most starting tackles have at least a 70.64 or, or higher at least that's the average flexibility score when it comes to a starting tackle so that's the only major question mark of connor williams but other than that i think you have a guy that easily can become a long-term starter a very young prospect as well and i think he can work out for you either as a tackle or a offensive or, or interior offensive lineman based on his overall athleticism testing uh, and then of course you get to michael gallup wide receiver out of colorado state uh, when it comes to his uh, his production data, he scored a 92.29 passing yardage mark share production score, which pretty much hits all five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowl, and long-term starter thresholds. Uh, pretty much hits above the average All-Pro score when it comes to this metric as well. And on top of that, when you get to his athleticism testing, uh, scored a 71.17 explosive lower body strength score, 67.14 speed score, and 56.36 flexibility score. Uh, pretty much getting above the 54 or higher athleticism trait mark that he needs to hit in terms of uh, all pro to pro bowl potential. So Michael Gallup in many ways is a wide receiver that has all pro to pro bowl level uh, production and potential from athleticism testing. So I think Michael Gallup is a, another player that scored very, very highly in terms of uh, overall metrics and analytics. Uh, then of course you get to Dorrance Armstrong, edge out of Kansas. <clears throat> when you get to his uh, production data, uh, scored a 71.39 solo tackle score. 93.22 sack score and 87.61 TFL score. Uh, based on the data since the 1989 NFL draft class, uh, he pretty much looks like a Pro Bowl level guy when it comes to his production. And when he gets his athleticism testing, uh, scored relatively well, not amazing though. Had a 26.54 explosive lower body strength score, 28.97 speed score, and a 70.21 flexibility score. Uh, doesn't quite look like an all pro player or Pro Bowl player based on his athleticism testing but does look like a starter player i think when you look at his flexibility testing this is someone that could easily become a long-term starter has a production of a long-term starter and i think that's honestly a pick that doesn't get talked about enough with this draft class is dorance armstrong because he's a guy that could easily become a major contributor on that dallas cowboys defensive line then of course you get to dalton schultz uh tight end out of stanford uh, when you get to his uh, his uh, production, didn't score that well. Uh, 55.05 is all he hit, which hits above the bottom and threshold for Pro Bowl potential. But when you look at the averages in terms of all pro potential, Pro Bowl potential, and starter potential, he's well below what those averages are when it comes to his production score. Um, so it doesn't look that amazing when it comes to that overall data. And on top of that, when you get to his athleticism testing, 
He did not hit one all-pro to Pro Bowl level athleticism trait when it comes to tight ends. So he didn't hit the minimum threshold in terms of his explosive lower body change score, speed score, or flexibility score. I think best case scenario, Dalton Schultz becomes a long-term starter as sort of a blocking guard potentially. But other than that, I don't think there's a ton of upside here in terms of him becoming like an elite tight end at the next level. Uh, then, of course, you get to Mike White, quarterback out of Western Kentucky. Uh, when you get to his uh, production data, his high school production score was a 97.83 out of 100, which pretty much hits all starting and Pro Bowl level quarterback thresholds when it comes to that particular metric, but only has a 79.33 FBS stat score, which is his highest FBS stat score, which does not quite hit the Pro Bowl threshold, but does hit above the starter threshold. But his only real issue is his career production. Uh, only had a 49.67 in terms of his career FBS score, uh, which is where you take all of his production scores, combine it, and then divide it by how many years he started. Uh, and uh, he doesn't really hit the bottom and threshold for all pro potential, pro bowl potential since the 1958 NFL draft class. And on top of that, when you look at the average FBS scores for all pro players, pro bowl players, and even starter players, it doesn't look that amazing either. I don't think the Cowboys expect Mike White to become a starter but you're definitely not playing the odds when you select a guy like this in this later round, uh, if that makes any sense. Because when you think of later round quarterbacks that turned out to be pretty decent, like Dak Prescott, for example, um, those are guys that had much better career FBS scores and much better single season FBS scores, which is something that Mike White doesn't quite have. Then, of course, we get to Chris Covington, linebacker out of Indiana. Uh, when you get to his production data, he had a 62.95 in terms of solo tackle data, which doesn't quite hit the all-pro threshold or pro bowl threshold. Uh, since the 1989 NFL draft class, but does hit at least a starter threshold. And then, of course, to get to his athleticism testing, he had a 63.75 explosive lower body strength score, 46.13 speed score, and 68.43 flexibility score. Uh, pretty much hits close to the uh, Pro Bowl explosive lower body strength score and also hits above the flexibility score, but doesn't quite have the speed of a Pro Bowl player. I think best case scenario with uh, Chris Covington, you're looking at a potential long-term starter at the linebacker position, but... He just doesn't quite look even close to the starting average in terms of athleticism data. And I think that's something that might bite him in the butt long term. And of course, we get to Cedric Wilson, wide receiver out of Boise State. Uh, when you get to his production data, he had an 87.58, which pretty much hits uh, all the five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowl, and long-term starter thresholds at the position. Uh, when you look at the averages, he looks more like a Pro Bowl, in between a Pro Bowl or a starter. When you look at the averages at the position, but still a very good score. His only issue really runs into athleticism testing. He only had a 26.69 explosive lower body strength score, 15.66 speed score, and 30.48 flexibility score. Uh, since the 1999 NFL draft class, there's only been two wide receivers to go on to become multiple Pro Bowl wide receivers with less than a 54 athleticism score. So basically, only three wide receiver, or only two, excuse me, have looked like this athletically that went on to become very good players. One was Chad Johnson, and the other was Jarvis Landry. Cedric Wilson, although his athleticism is not amazing, you could potentially have a Jarvis Landry slash uh, Chad Johnson like outlier because of his production. But other than that, that's all you can really hope for with Cedric Wilson. Again, he's a later round pick, so obviously these are not guys that you expect to become really successful long term. But that is kind of the big major kind of question mark with him in terms of the data long term. Uh, and then lastly, we get to Bo Scarborough, uh, running back out of Alabama. Uh, when it comes to his production data, had a 20.92 uh, market share production score, which doesn't hit the all-pro threshold, five-time Pro Bowl threshold, or even three-time Pro Bowl threshold in terms of his production data. And when you look at the averages at the position, doesn't hit anywhere near close to uh, the starter average, Pro Bowl average, or all-pro average, but does have very good athleticism testing. This is the only sort of saving grace for Bo Scarborough. Had a 97.71 explosive lower body strength score and a 79.20 speed score for his size. Very, very athletic running back who just wasn't productive for a various amount of reasons because of injury, because he just wasn't as good as other players. Bottom line though, guy that may not work out long term, but you don't necessarily need him to work out long term because of Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, so overall, when you look at the over the Dallas Cowboys uh, draft class, I really like this draft class. I think when you look at the top three picks in particular you're looking at guys that have very good chance to become long-term starters or better with some high quality upside with all three uh, you look at a guy like Dorrance Armstrong and Dalton Schultz who could become long-term starters Chris Covington could be a long-term starter and Cedric Wilson even could become a long-term starter the wide receiver position 
Picks I'm not as high on, of course, is Mike White and Bo Scarborough. But for the most part, I really like this Dallas Cowboys draft. So let me know in the comment section below, how do you feel about the Dallas Cowboys draft? And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so that you're always reminded when another video drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.